So we're going to continue on today with a cart. Uh, and we had built this cart last t last session, which was last week actually. And when you click on the add to cart, it actually does something in the back end, but we can't see it unless we stop the code and look at the uh, array. So just as a review, uh, we have this click function, this click method that we added to uh, the event on click. So every time they click on this add to cart button, it's calling this function. And we look up the, the PID. Remember, I was storing some information in the data elements to show you how to, how to do that. That's become a very common practice. Uh, there's people that even store whole paragraphs of HTML in there to display that they're dynamically generating from the back end. So it's, uh, it's pretty useful stuff. Uh, and so then we created a cart object, uh, an object to put in our cart array, sorry. And we went through the new cart object and we added some properties to that. So now my cart array has all of those selections that the user has made. And so it would be nice to be able to see that, right? So let's show our cart. So let's write a little function called display cart. And this, is, this doesn't have to be an already function, just to show you that not everything has to be there. Uh, I'm going to write a function called uh, display cart. And we're going to call that from inside of our button click. Every time they click the button, we want to redisplay all the stuff that's already in the cart, right? So first of all, we need to f have a place on our page to fill it up with stuff. So we're going to put it in our page, in our order page, uh, above our footer and below all of our products. Let's add another div here and give it an ID of cart div. Just because I want to be able to target that directly and easily inside of uh, jQuery, right? I don't want to have to search for the 15th div after the div that has a data role. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Let's target directly because these are going to change. I might have three or 3,000 products on my page. All right. So how do I get at that div? Dollar sign. Hash cart div, right? That gives me the value. And I want to store that in a variable. Because what happens is this selector process actually takes a fair amount of time to go through the DOM and find it. So you're calling a jQuery function, and it's going through and finding the element, and it's returning a DOM node. So this cart div is a DOM node. So it makes sense to look it up once. And then I can use that later on to call things and append stuff to it. I don't want to do that looking this up multiple times. So I believe in PHP Storm. Also, if I do this multiple times, it'll complain and say that's inefficient. So we want to do that as few times as possible. So once I have it, I'm going to uh, kill all of the HTML that's in there, and I'm going to redisplay it every time. Now, there's thousands of ways to do this, but this was the easiest, I figured. I'm going to wipe out all the HTML that's inside that div. So that's what that does. It sets the HTML to nothing. So the div surrounding the HTML is still there, but the stuff inside of it's gone. And then I need to have, uh, I have a bunch of stuff in my cart array. How do I go through my cart array? OK, so I'm going to use a for loop. Uh, and this is another way of doing. Uh, the a for loop because uh, just to give you another uh, example of a JavaScript loop, 
So this is for every item in the cart, and these actually then will be filled in in the loop. So it's looking through every element in the cart, and it will return it as item. So item is what? Which is a? No. It's an object containing a bunch of properties. Remember, we created it down here with the new object, right? So it's an object. So item, I can do stuff like item.quantity, uh, et cetera. That will give me the value of that particular item. Yeah, it's like a dot each, right? So I'm going to get the value from the quantity. Uh, and to do that, I have to say cart sub item dot QTY. All right, so that's, it's like looking up the same thing as if I did a for I equals zero, I less than cart sub dot length, that kind of thing, same kind of pro process. So I have to look up the item in the cart array, and this is an object that I can then look at the property associated with it. This one, yeah, it's. Um, it, no, <laughs> no, because I tried that and it didn't work. So it doesn't, it doesn't do that. So then I, I'm going to pull out the price. The same thing. I don't want to look these up all the time. So I'm, I'm going to get these values. This this will be the actual value of that item in the cart. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't do bars very often. <coughs> so we do, uh, we need a subtotal is going to be what? Quantity times price, very good, times price. So that's my subtotal. And I'm going to dis, uh, display, well, let's do that in a second. Now that I have that information, I'm going to go to my cart div node, and I can append some information. I want to append a string that is a, a p tag. Um, followed by the quantity, followed by uh, maybe a, a colon. You can format this however you want. I did. Um, followed by the cart sub item dot name, because I want to show the name of the item in the cart. And let's add a space after that, and then we can add the, the price. The price, and how do I convert that into a two-digit decimal point dollars and cents? There's one called two fixed that gives me that work, right? And then, well, I, and I'm doing this, uh, you can obviously do this however you want. Uh, it does add the dollar sign, yes, um, I believe. And then I want to show the subtotal for this. So I'm going to su say subtotal dot two fixed for two decimal points. And then finally close my paragraph tag. Aren't you going to want to keep an eye on the, the total? Probably. So we'll do that in a second. So that's looping through my array here. And we can put it on multiple lines if you want. Uh, so this will append a paragraph with all of this stuff in it. And so let's see if that works. So let's reload our page. Sorry, I've got to upload my page. Well, I have a, I got two extra thingies here, that's why. 
I never called the function. What do you mean? Where would I call the function at? Ah, very good. So in my button click, after I fill it up, and right at the end, I want to call my, my function, right? So how do I call my display cart? Display cart. That's it. I'm not passing any parameters. Uh, my cart uh, array is a is essentially global to all of this page, so that's fine. The parents. Yes, you are. No. 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 I only I only do this if I'm going to assign it. That gives me the function Adam, called display cart. I know I'm right. Yes, but in that situation, that's inside <laughs> of closed click event. It right. It's not going to get executed. Right. It's only going to get executed when I click on my button. All right. So add to cart. So I've got one item here. Add to cart, two items, three items. And now if I add another one, look at that, it added two boots. Why did it do that? All right, and every time I click it, I'm incrementing my quantity value, right? And, and then I'm wiping out my cart and displaying it all of the HTML again every time. So it, it kind of blinks. All right, and it does my calculations inside of this, uh, so my card is perfect. Except I need to have a grand total. That doesn't add the dollar sign. So I told you it didn't. <laughs> so we'll add the dollar signs in here. You get what you pay for. That's right. So let's uh, let's add a grand total. So I need to store, I have a grand total variable. And inside of this, I want to add up my grand total, right? So I'm going to say grand total plus equals subtotal, right? And then I need to, after all of this happens, after the loop, right, I want to display my um, grand total. So I'm going to put it, let's put it in another P, P tag. Jeez. And then we'll, add, we'll concatenate the grand, we'll uh, to fix it again, right? Uh, grand total dot to fixed. And we'll end our last little string. We'll put our dollar sign in here. And that should work, right? Theoretically, it's going to work, I'm telling you. So now we add our cart, got our grand total. Look at that. Isn't that great? So I might add even grand total right here. Well, it only got part of the f code. There we go. Isn't that great? It got me a little cart. Now, obviously, you can format that however you want. But that gives you the idea of every time they click on something, their cart changes, right? Any questions on any of that? Pretty simple stuff, right? So now we want to add a buy button. They're happy with this. I want to add a buy button to this. Right, they, they're finally ready. They've added all their pizza toppings, and they're going to say buy, click, right? So we need to have a button to buy. And I called it buy now. So I need to put that somewhere up here. Um, I could, but I'm not going to. If I do it inside of here, I'd have to change all my logic to not wipe out my HTML every time, right? So I put it outside in a separate div, 
because this was easier. <laughs> and I said, okay, we're going to give that an ID of uh, buy now. All right. And inside of this, we need an actual button that we can do something with. Um, and we'll call this, uh, we'll use a button, right? Button. And uh, we'll call this a buy. Actually, I don't need a buy now on the div. I need it on the button. <coughs> and we'll call it buy now. And close my div, and I put this in a P for some reason. All right, so now I've got a buy button. Let's see what it does. So now it says buy now. Look at that. It doesn't do anything. So, <laughs> what? Really, charge, 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 right? So now I need to do what to this button to make it do something? I need a click event. Very good. So in my code down here, in my document ready, I need to have a whole new click event. So I need to look up the button called buy. And I need to do an on method, click. Because that's that's the new. You changed it to just buy. I think I changed it to just buy. Okay. Just buy. So on my click event, I want to call a function, an anonymous function. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, this is a variable. You can put uh, Dave here if you want. I, anything I want. It's just that's the variable name that I would use inside here if I want to reference that event. So, yes, absolutely. Not specific, yeah. All right, so. <coughs> The easiest way to do this, we're going to actually send us. We, we can't buy it on our on our web page. That would be really insecure, right? Uh, we need to send us to some back end processing to actually do the connection to the to PayPal or wherever we're going to buy it. Um, take the date, take the inventory out of our inventory, all that kind of stuff. We need to do that on the back end server. So we need to. How do we tell the back end server that something's happened? in just straight HTML? A post, right? We do a post on a form, and that post sends what data to the back end? Right, but how does it send it? Key value pairs, right? Key value pairs with ampersands in between. Remember the, the get string in PHP is the same in the post, it's just hidden. The post string of key value pairs is identical to the get string, OK? So once if I post that to a PHP script, for instance, what does PHP do to that? They take it and do what with it? <laughs> Turns it into an array called, boy, I know PHP was a long time ago, <laughs> dollar sign underscore post. And it, and it parses it all out for me, gives me an associative array of the key value pairs, right? So I, in my PHP, it already does all that code for me, so it makes sense to just send it a string. And how do I build up a string in JavaScript? Bunch of pluses, right? I'm going to go through, similar to my display cart, loop through my cart, pick out the pieces of data, and create a string of all this information so that I can eventually post it to my backend processor. All right? Yeah. So let's do that. So on my click event, I need to, let's create a little uh, by URL string that I'm going to play with. 
And similar to my cart display, I'm going to do a, a for loop, for bar uh, item in cart, just to show you a different way. Um, and I'm going to get the quantity is the values I need, right? The quantity is the cart sub item dot qty. They are variables. What does var do to it? No. I think you don't understand what var actually does to these things. It doesn't. It makes it. It makes it local to this block of code. That's all it does. So the var. So if I don't do that, this this could potentially be a conflict outside this block of code. The quantity could still be available outside out the block of code. So that all this does is scope it to this block, which is why I don't use it very often. But if you guys want to be real particular there, we'll do that. So we'll uh, we'll. Uh, <laughs> We have to build up our URL. Right. If I really want it outside, I could do this. Var qty equals nothing, right? And then not do it in here. Otherwise, that var would wipe it out again and make it a different scoped variable inside that block. But I don't want to do that. It's all scoping. All right. So the by URL is a string containing uh, what do I need in the back end to tell the server what they're buying. What does the back end really care about? The total price. No, the total can be calculated. Quantity of item, right? So I'm going to have a bunch of <laughs> items and a bunch of quantity. I don't even care about the description because that's already in my database in the back end, right? I don't care about uh, the price because that's in my back end. I don't want them to be able to change that in my page, right? Anything like this, I want to look that all up again in my database. So all I need is the record number that they're going to buy, the PID, which is what I called it in here, my product ID number, and the quantity that they want to buy. That's all I need, those two pieces of information, right? So let's just look that up from my cart. So I need the uh, PID. <coughs> And that is going to be equal to the item, which uh, is the number. If this, if, remember last week when we looked at it, the item actually was the PID. Remember this cart sub PID? That ends up being the item number, the record number. And then I'm going to add to that uh, the quantity for that. So QTY equals. Oops. Ah. And equals the quantity, all right, which I retrieved up here. Now, I don't have to do this. I could just put cart sub item dot quantity. Since I'm only using it once, that kind of makes sense, right? So let's do that once. Just replace that here. Delete that, take care of that line. Now I've got one line of code that it does. And at the end of this, I have a, a string. So uh, what I usually do is make sure my string is right before I start posting it to my back end. Right? So I'm going to do a console.log of what? By URL. Very good. So let's just do that. It's not going to go back to my back end at all yet. So I'll add a bunch of stuff, a uh, bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Say buy now, and I've got to look at my string and my console. And this is what I get. All right? Looks pretty good, right? PID is 1120, quantity is 48. PID is 2120, quantity is 2, sorry. Four, PID is 31, quantity is 4. All right, whatever. So that looks like a good string. If I added an HTTP colon, yada, 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 dot 
buy.php question mark before that, that would be my query string to post to the back end. All right, that's one way to do that. But what's wrong with this information? Anybody see? Sure it is. Sure it is. Key value. Key value. Key value. Key value. What if the, I have to have a, in order for the back end, uh, PHP requires the form name and the value of that form. That's what a form posts, right? So I need the name of the form that they're posting. I'm just making the form is just fake. Yeah, readily append that to your URL because you're missing your question mark and you have that. Well, sure. I put a question mark before it and I put all my HTTP. That's okay. A question mark ampersand is fine. That is the only way to do it. In the PHP side, the PHP is going to strip this out and give me the variables. But there is a problem with this. Overwrite what? Why? Ah, very good. So PID here is going to be overwritten in my post array or my get array in the back end. So uh, I don't have the actual uh, PHP code. So let's let's create a PHP file. Uh, we'll call it by.php. And we'll take this data and we'll just uh, print R it. If you guys remember your PHP. Uh, we'll just print out the get array. And because this is written differently, it has to be in a method. So that's all that's going to do. So if I, if I upload that to the program and I call by.php with this data, let's just do that right now. If I go back to, uh, I know it's not. Relax. I wanted to do it this way. We'll just do this. Uh, and we'll put my by dot php question mark here and it says okay that's what you got printing out the array gave you an array of the key is pid and the value is 3020 the quantity is 4 so what did I get I got the last one right which is not good I want to sell more than just the last one right so in order to fix that Where was my code? I, what? <laughs> Lasties, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to just print out the PIDs. Uh, I, could, I could name each one of these different, PID1, PID2, PID3, right? Yeah. Really not efficient. That would take a lot of extra work. Uh, what's nice is that PHP, if you pass in what looks like an array, it will add these values into an array for you. So if I call this a PID with brackets and a quantity with brackets as the name of the key value pair, the name of the key, PHP knows what to do with that. All right, so let's, uh, let's go and actually create my URL. Um, Let's see, console. I uh, already got part of it. Let's create the URL and say, um, no. I don't want it to go, no. I'm going to do it all in the back end so I don't see any change. We'll do that in a minute. We're going to kind of use Ajax to do this. All right, so I want to add in HTTP colon slash slash my site name, which is uh, whatever this is. We're going to add all of this stuff to my URL plus my URL. Yeah, I see it. I see it. All right, so that's going to be my URL. So let's let's print that out to the console, and then we can go to it and see what happens. So we add a bunch to my cart. We look at my console. There's my URL. 
and it's got this these pids here and since they're named the same when I go to that now I have an array of arrays so it's a double array a race of 0 is 1120 2120 3120 then I get uh, three, four, and three. All right, so those are the quantities that associate with each other. So this, the first element of this one associates with the first element of this one. So they want three of my product 1120s. They want four of my 2120s. They want three of my 3120s. Does that make sense? Totally. Totally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so let's, let's show you what it actually does. Um, it actually, I can do it in my buy here. And I can get my quantities. Is my dollar sign get of the QTY array? My PIDs is my dollar sign get of my PID array, right? So now if I print these out, now obviously you can do this in Rails, uh, ASP, whatever, but this is the easiest to set up, and you should already have had PHP here. So there we go. Let's uh, load that guy up, reload my page. And you see now that my quantities is just an array. My uh, values are just, I mean, my PIDs are just an array. All right. So I, would, I could then loop through those and build up a, a query string or whatever I want to do to access my database, uh, um, make adjustments to my inventory, add up the quantities, whatever I want to do, you know, fill, figure out how much my totals are. And I want to do that on the server side because that's a security issue. I don't want them to dictate my prices. I don't want them to be able to change any data in the page. All right, everybody with me so far? All right. So um, what I want to do is when they when they click on the buy, I want to actually take them uh, well, let's see how did I do this? I don't want to take them to that page. I want to there's lots of ways to do this. I want to uh, get the data that this buy page processed. So this buy page is going to go through, access my database, uh, do some other stuff, and then return some information to me that I can do something with, right? So there's lots of ways to do that. Um, and one of them is to call it, let's see, where's my index? On the click here, I want to call a function called get JSON. All right, so I'm going to get data back from the server in a JSON format. And we'll just to see, I want to call the by, uh, dot PHP URL. <coughs> that has my by URL appended to it. It's my query string. So what that does is uh, makes a request from the browser to the back end without the user really seeing anything that's going on, right? They don't see a page change. All right, everybody with me so far? No? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I have an error here somewhere. Yes. That's the problem. So I need to have a function that gets called when my 
when this routine finishes. So it's going to make a web request to the back end. The back end is going to do its processing. And whatever data comes back from that request, I want to do something with that. I get there. Do you want to program? Are you a backseat programmer? All right. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's go back to the by.php to get that data right. <clears throat> Um, as a result of my my doing something, you know, process process some of the order here, right? A bunch of stuff's going to go on there. There. Uh, but what I want to return is some more information, maybe to capture, you know, they're starting their buying process. So what other information do I need from them? Name, shipping address, credit card, all that kind of stuff. So. Let's create uh, a string using the uh, multi-line string in PHP, the here doc, uh, end of form. And let's pass in a form. Maybe we're going to go to a whole another uh, URL when they post their form. Just to show another ways to do that, I'm going to have a name. We're going to ask for their name. And it needs a, a value for its name. And we'll break it so it looks better. We're going to have an address, etc. They do. Yes, they do. We could call this address, right? Address. And then we need a button to do something with, right? Input type equals submit. Uh, name equals submit. Value equals submit order. Right, so that's the data, and since I want my my front end HTML, I mean JavaScript jQuery on the front end does really good at processing JSON notation, which is JavaScript object notation. Uh, it, it parses that very easily. So the result of my page here, yes. Oh, just for validation purposes, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, good eye. So let's, uh, let's comment that out. And the result of calling this, I want to echo back my form, but I want to encode it in the JSON format. And there happens to be a nice little PHP function called JSON encode. And I give it the string that I want it to encode, and it will put it in the right format for me. So the result of calling this page is going to echo back some JSON data. So let's see what it looks like if I go to this page uh, in, a, in a browser. So this is what it looks like. If I, if I look at it in the source, uh, you can see it's a string with some data inside of it. All right? So it, it formats it. It puts the slash r slash ends. Everything is put in here just as one big long string. Uh, because there aren't any other data, it's just a simple string. So JSON encodes it as a string. Does that make sense? It's a simple string. All right. So now I have to look at my page. After they click on Buy Now, I want to actually go and get that data and do something with it. So what comes back is this data object. 
and I want to put that data object somewhere. All right? So in my cart div, maybe I'll look up my cart div again. And I can append, uh, let's see, I can just append um, Yeah, just append. And this is already uh, HTML, so I can just append my data that comes back. Which is, uh, let's see if that's going to work here. Actually, I should be able to just do that. All right, let's see if that works. If not, I went off script here, so we'll see what happens. So, oops, I hit the buy now button already. It worked, though. It did, right? Yeah. So let's load it again because you missed that great stuff. So I click on the buy now. And it comes back and asks me for my name and address. So I can add some other stuff in here. And now the submit is going to go where? To the back end. To the back end and it's going to go to my purchase uh, dot whatever this form is, whatever I did on my form. Purchase right? Purchase.php. So I need, it doesn't exist yet. That's why I get this error, right? It says error loading page. But from the user's perspective, uh, not the page didn't reload. It didn't reload the entire page. It only reloaded this little piece of data, and that's what they call AJAX. That's sending data to the back end, which is asynchronous Java and XML is what it used to be called. Uh, now everybody uses JSON instead of XML, but they don't want to call it AJAX. <laughs> so AJAX. Uh, it's the back end, the browser itself, whether it's on a mobile device or your local computer here, it's sending the URL to the back end, getting data, and replacing a piece of the page. Notice my jQuery just did, uh, did this append, and it didn't replace the whole page. It just added data to my HTML. So it's very dynamic. It looks like a real application. When I then press uh, submit order, I might replace this information with, uh, you know, their credit card information. You know, I'd probably ask for their credit card information in this form. A lot more stuff. Right, right. So how would I make my buy now button disappear? All right, good. Buy. Dot parent. Dot hide. I want to just to kill that whole thing. So, oops. So we add a bunch of stuff. By now, my button goes away. I got my submit order. Isn't that great? It does. Very good. All right, any questions on any of that? So that's basically, obviously, I'm not going to go through and buy this from PayPal, that, that's a couple weeks of work on its own. <laughs> we'll leave that alone. Uh, it's not too bad if you just do single buttons, but if you do whole carts and things, that gets a little more complicated. Um, but this is, this is all I want for your assignment, to be able to do some kind of back-end processing of the order and uh, do this AJAX interaction with the page. So, yeah, this is good enough for me. You can. It's easy with jQuery, isn't it? Isn't that really easy? No. I'm not posting the. I'm. I'm doing this. This Git JSON is doing that for me. That's actually doing the call. This Git JSON is going to this URL. 
which assumes that it's on this page already. So that's built into it. And then I'm adding my query string at the end of it. So that is essentially doing this. Right. The return comes back, and this function, anonymous function, gets the data that comes back from that site, which is everything, and I can do something with that. If I had a more complex structure, I'd have to look at the, each data point and things like that. I can do that. But right now, it's just a string is what I was doing. All right? Isn't that cool? All right.